you know what I like to do? I like to look at some baseball cards. And now, here's Johnny. I wanted to do a follow-up on my video uh, talking about, you know, collecting athletes versus collecting humans and the, the character of, of athletes. You know, there are different eras in life. And in the modern era, we seem to want to go back and rewrite history in a lot of cases. And we view the past with the lens of the now. When I was young, we had a family friend and he happened to be a, an advisor. He worked at uh, the college I went to. And I'd go pop in on him from time to time and, and just talk. And uh, he once told me something. And I thought it was pretty brilliant. Because he was saying that, you know, oftentimes the older generation doesn't understand the younger generation. And they'll always be like, well, when I was your age... And what he said was, you were never my age. You know, if you were 16 when I was 16, my parents were never my age. They were never 16 at the time I was 16. Kids that are 16 now, I was never 16 in 2024. I didn't have to deal with the stuff that they have to deal with. There was no online bullying. There were no school shootings. There were no service pets. You know, it was a different era. In the card collecting community, you will often hear young collectors talk really horribly about older collectors. Us older collectors, we grew up in a different era. So we don't always get what's happening now. Hell, I don't get 90% of the stuff that happens in the whole world now, let alone card collecting. You know, it was a different era. Baseball was played differently. You know, a lot of hit and runs, stolen bases, bunts. You know, I saw a, an old World Series game where Duke Snyder laid down a bunt. Just imagine for one moment, a home run hitter today. Being asked to bunt, not going to happen. We live in an era where we're never going to see another 300-game winner. We live in an era where there will never probably be a running back to break the all-time record, even though they play more games. You know, times change. And generations, oftentimes, we don't understand each other. But we look at the past with the lens of the present. And I think that hurts our understanding sometimes. You can't always judge what happened in the past based on today's standards. My great-grandmother had 13 children. Would have been 14, one died at birth. She got married when she was like 13 years old. Stayed married her whole life until my great-grandfather passed away, raised those children, that would be a crime today. Should I judge my great-grandparents? Does that make her a bad person or my great-grandfather a bad person? I don't know, but it's the way things were back then. You know, in the early days of baseball, they... There were a couple deaf players, Dummy Hoy, Dummy Taylor, and they called them Dummy. Now, by today's standards, that would be awful. It would sound awful. But back then, it wasn't. See, Dummy wasn't a slang term that was a bad term. It, it didn't mean stupid back then. It's just the way they described deaf and dumb people. It wasn't used as a bad slur, I don't believe, until the 1920s. 
but you would never call somebody dummy today. You know, you look at Chief Myers, Chief Bender, they would call Native Americans chief. You couldn't do that today. But I don't see anywhere. I never read anything. I, I don't know. But I, I don't think that they took it as an insult. It's different eras. Things change. Times change. Offensive things change. Offensive language changes. Sometimes in life, it's just the way it is. I was watching on the Golf Channel one time, and they were interviewing Jack Nicklaus and Gary Player and Arnold Palmer and Lee Trevino. And they were talking about how they used to have to gather their families in a car and travel together and stay in hotels and... You know, how tough it was to be on the road. And, you know, they got nothing. They, they never had anything given to them. And uh, they were asking them, you know, in the modern world of golf, all these guys have instructors and they have mental coaches. And they said, what do you think about having a mental coach? And these guys are just, you know, you could just tell that they thought it was ridiculous. And Lee Trevino, he said, you know who my mental coach was? It was Jack Daniels. We just had to deal with it. You know, they had to deal with it. And I started to think, you know, back to my last video and talking about how back in the old days, there were a lot of uh, players who, who drank a lot. And uh, a comment, uh, somebody that commented uh, just sparked this in me. But, you know, it was a different time back then. Uh, they didn't have anybody they could cry about, uh, uh, cry to. Uh, they didn't have psychologists. They didn't go see their... They're psychologists every time they were feeling down. They didn't have a mental coach. Uh, they, did, they, they had to be manly. They, they couldn't whine and cry to their wife or uh, anybody else. Uh, they, they had to deal with things. They didn't have service pets. They didn't get trophies for coming in ninth place. You know, they were, um, they were expected to be tough. Uh, a lot of these guys lived through the Great Depression. Uh, they grew up with nothing. Uh, you know, they had to live on the road and, and just have whatever was on their back. Uh, they had no guarantee of being on the team each and every game, let alone season. I mean, they had it tough. And so a lot of them turned to drinking. Uh, it was a different way of coping with your stress or, or your problems. You know, every era has their, their own thing. Like I said in my video, you know, there was a, an era where people uh, drank a lot to drown their sorrow sorrows. There were generations where men had mistresses, and that was just known. The wife would know, and that's just the way people lived. Now, we frown upon that today. We frown upon my grandmother today. We frown a lot of, uh, uh, we frown down a, uh, on a lot of things it happened in the old days. But times were different then. You know, with the modern football and the rule changes and the head injuries, you had Bill Hewitt, who was the only man on the field without a helmet. He was a defensive end playing without a helmet. I mean, he would never be allowed to play that way today. But Bill Belichick, you know, is praising the guy as you know, a great player, not thinking about any of that other stuff. It was just a different era. You know, everything was a different era. Uh, these players today, they don't know what it's like to take time off, give up their career and multi-million dollar salaries and go fight in a war. I'm gonna think about that. You know, times change. We all just need to understand that and think about that sometimes, I think. You know, for the younger people, the younger collectors that might look down on us older collectors, you don't know yet. Someday you will. You will. But you don't know yet. You can't know what you don't know. Confucius said it is better to travel 10,000 miles than to read 10,000 books. Experience is the best teacher. You can read all you want about how to play baseball until you actually play it. 
You don't know shit. Thanks for watching.